This is my lobo coral. I've had it for several years and you can see how the lobes are moving. Lobophilia. This is a hammer coral. The flow is being created or caused by the vortex pumps, which are kind of in chaotic mode, it seems like. Here's a small Acan Lord Hoensis. When you look at these corals closely, you can see the polyps moving, and that's why I did this video. With SPS corals, it's not as easy to see, but you'll notice here the polyps have little hairs that are moving back and forth. Just have to look really closely and run this in high def. Here's a nice soft coral. It's a Nephthia coral. Got it from a friend of mine in Austin, and it's been growing into a large colony at the far end of my tank. This is a devil's hand leather coral. Very easy to care for. Once it becomes colony size, it'll drop babies everywhere, so you can share them with others. Here's a candy cane or trumpet coral. These are some fungia plates. They all grew from the parent colony. That's quite a few right there, all together. And this is a tongue coral from Australia. I love the green polyps. This next coral is a semacora. It's kind of a honey brown. I have a green one in the frag tank, but I like this brown one as well. Little tiny hairs that move back and forth. Here's another hammer coral. I have this scattered throughout my tank in multiple locations. Another lobophilia. To its left, there's a small clam in that 10 o'clock position that filter feeds. Here's a large colony of frog spawn, and out of sight behind it is a torch coral. Here are a few pallies, or palithoa, often referred to as zoanthids, and one of the chalices in my reef. Quick bonus video of the week. Just a couple things I picked up yesterday at the Texas Coral Fest. I picked up a Tiger Shark float, which is an awesome cleaning magnet for my tank, which uses three quarter inch glass. And as you can see with all this foam in here, it's because the magnet is so large. So this is the outer part that holds onto the glass. It's got felt on there. The inner part is scrubby and it's super light. It'll float when it comes separated from the magnet itself. And there also is extra pads, instructions, replacement pad, replacement felt, and then this could be used if you were working on an acrylic tank. That's the first item. The second item is my two-part putty from DD, Aquascape putty. I love this stuff. First of all, when you get a box, make sure it's purple on the back because that means it's going to be coralline colored and not gray like concrete. It comes in two different sticks and you would just tear off a small piece of each part, knead it together, and then use it. I'll be talking about that in a future video when I'll show how to do pegging and frag, uh, mounting frags. So anyway, just wanted to show you this as well as a little bit of some of the reef that I thought was kind of pretty to showcase. I think I might even use these pads on my old magnet because it's not working as well as it used to. And I figure if I have one on the front of the tank and I have one on the back of the tank, I'll be more motivated to work. Keeping that glass clean on both sides. So please like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you Thursday.